Welcome to Around the House Northwest, presented by PGE, an Oregon kind of energy. Welcome in to another edition of Around the House Northwest here on Fox 12 Plus. I'm Eric G. Coming up on today's show, we're going to talk with legendary landscape designer Steve Griggs and show you a must-have product for any DIY builder, the Post Protector. But first, we always kick off the show with our Perform Like a Pro segment. Here's a great way to upgrade your kitchen or bathroom without spending a bunch of money by refinishing and refreshing your old cabinetry. You can give that space a brand new look without breaking the bank. Now it's time for Perform Like a Pro. All right guys, today I'm gonna give you my tricks for elevating that kitchen or bathroom by showing you how to paint cabinetry. Now this is not a quick project, but it's something you can completely remake a space with a little bit of elbow grease. And I'm gonna show you how to do it today. So we're gonna start out with this cabinet right here. This is your basic kitchen cabinet, which means it's had a lot of hard use over its life. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna take it apart and I'll show you what we're gonna to do to upgrade it. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the hardware. We're gonna paint this up and make it look really good and even put a skin on the side and I'll show you why. So let's take this thing apart and get it in pieces. All right, first thing we're gonna do is gonna take all the doors off. These will either clip off or there are screws like this one. So let me take a couple screws out here. You wanna make sure and save all the hardware cause it's gotta go right back when you're done. If you're doing a lot of these, the other thing I like to do is number things because the last thing you wanna do is try to figure out what door goes where. And what you can do, and I'll show you where we're gonna do it after I tear this apart. Now at this point, you wanna figure out if you're gonna upgrade hinges. These actually are a bloom hinge right here, which are pretty high quality. I will warn you though, if you dive into this type of cabinet and wanna get into hinges, your best bet is to go down to your local specialty hardware store, not your home improvement store. Take those down there and try to match them up because there's literally hundreds to thousands of options and it's a deep rabbit hole you might not wanna dive into. So lean on a pro if you're gonna tackle the hinges. You might be able to upgrade them to soft close or whatever, depending on what you're looking for. So once I get these out of the way, if I have a lot of cabinets, one of the places I like to mark things is right inside this hole here because you'll never see it because you'll put the hinge cap back on. So if I was doing this, I'd just take a Sharpie and mark a one or a two or whatever, and then put a piece of tape over it. So when you go to put it back together, you know where it came from. That makes that job a lot easier and could save you hours in the process. And really the prep work is what's gonna make this look beautiful in the end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a really good heavy degreaser and I'm gonna spray this down, get us some degreaser on this and really get this as clean as I can. The reason why you wanna get that grease off is if I go through and sand this with the grease, I'm just driving that right into the finish that's there and we're gonna fight it later. So that's why you wanna get these things super clean. Now I'm using one of these 3M Scotch-Brite type scuff pads because the finish on this is actually in really good condition. So I just need to scuff it up so the primer has something to stick to. If you've got any scratches, just take a little piece of sandpaper and kind of scuff it out and make sure that you've got it dialed in there just so it's smooth. The primer and everything else will cover over the top of it. All right guys, now let's talk about some of the challenges we can run into when we're doing this project. Sides of the cabinets can be one of them, especially with these face frame ones. If you see that we have this face frame here and then there's this big kind of drop back in this panel, this is where we can run into some issues. This is a particle board cabinet side here. Nothing wrong with the particle board, it'll work. But this has a picture of wood basically glued onto the side of this from the factory. The answer is, is to pop down to your home improvement store. Grab one of these cabinet skins from their pre-manufactured cabinets. Now we're gonna cut it to size. This is off a regular base cabinet. We're gonna cut this down here to make sure it fits this great. We'll have a nice piece of wood on the side that we can work with. That way, we don't see that eggshell texture of the particle board. We'll see wood. It's gonna look like a much higher end project. So let's run to the table saw, cut that up. All right guys, we got that cut out. Let's dry fit it to make sure it's gonna fit right. Yeah, I'm cool with that. It's gonna look like a million bucks. So a couple ways you can fasten this. You can use pin nails that don't hold really well because it's really thin. So really it's an adhesive is your best answer. So if you wanna use construction adhesive or a fast glue like this, I'm going fast glue so we can keep moving. So now we're gonna go ahead. We've got this cleaned up. 
we're gonna start working this primer into it so we can let this dry. That way, we can start putting some paint on. I'm gonna work from the inside out on this. Now the one nice thing with these type of primers and paints, they've really designed them to lay out kind of flat as they dry. So the goal is, is to get, get this so it lays out really nice. So you'll have less brush marks. You can also roll this on. But the problem is, is I've got too many grooves and things on this that it's just gonna show. One trick, if you're doing a dark color, you can also uh, ask for people to tint that primer. That also means you don't have this white coat underneath. That could be a more durable option as well. This is also the time to look for any kind of little fish eyes showing up. You can see I got a little bit showing up here that I'm gonna have to watch for. That might require a little more cleaning. All right, guys, we've got everything primed. It's dried really well. So the next step is gonna seem a little bit out of order, but it's a good time to do that. This is when I like to drill the hardware because I can do it right now. And if it's off a little bit, I can refill it and fix it so I don't have to go back and paint it again. I can just line the hole up on there. That's perfect. So now we're gonna get the drill out. Got a little block back there and you always wanna drill from the front because if there's a little bit of blowout, you want it on the back, it's gonna be held by the screw anyway. Not that big a deal. So let's get a hole drilled right here. All right, now we're gonna do the drawer box here. There's a couple things. The drawer box, we have to go through both the drawer and the front of the box as well. That way it doesn't pull off. So they're a little bit longer screw. Now the thing is, if you hold on to your own hardware, that old hardware might fit on as far as the screws. They're probably the right length. And if it's all American stuff, the threads will be the same and it'll go in there. So you could actually probably use the old screws with your new hardware. Let's get some holes drilled. Now we're gonna go through the drawer box here as well. So you gotta be a little careful. This is a, a longer drill we're going through. All right, now that we got the hardware drilled, guys, we're gonna get to painting. This is the fun part. So I'm gonna dust this down, make sure I have no real sawdust on this, get this clean, and then we'll start painting next. All right, guys, we're gonna go with this Indigo Steamer Blue, and I'm just gonna roll this on the side here. So I'm gonna put just a little bit in here. This stuff is super thick, which I like. Lays out pretty nice, and it's a durable finish, which is nice when you pick one of these cabinetry finishes. So we're just gonna go ahead and get a coat on this. This will take two coats, especially with a big, deep color like this. So you wanna make sure and get this on there, but not too heavy. So we're just gonna go through and roll this out. What I like about it, it's thick enough that it really lays out nice. I like these little rollers like this because I can control it and get it into little bigger, you know, little spaces like this. It's not like I'm painting a big wall, right? So these are a little bit handier for doing it this way and you could sit there with a brush, but I just don't want to have that many brush marks on this. The smoother I can get this, the better off I am. Last thing I want to do is overwork this and then it won't lay out correctly. All right, guys, I got a lot more painting to do on this. Can't wait to put the hardware on. That's coming up next. <music> 